happens is uh, Carl Jung wrote a paper on flying saucers in 1947 and basically he said to bring it down to a nutshell when people are confronted by things they don't understand they apply a cultural a cultural uh, arch 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 archetype to what they don't understand and to me that actually makes it more fantastic in certain ways so let's talk you know let's talk about have aliens visited Earth in recent times? No, and I'll tell you why. The history of every species on this Earth is when one species comes in that has any kind of dominance over the other species, whether it's a microbe to Native Americans from a red squirrel being battled out by grey squirrels to all kinds of sea crustaceans. Uh, the dominant species always wipes it out. I have a friend in Wells War, the world is actually a metaphor for... Uh, Native Americans being wiped out by the, uh, you know, by immigrant groups from Europe. I think that's 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 the reason for me why I don't believe aliens have ever come and made deals with the U.S. government. They wouldn't bother if they had that kind of technology to just walk in and take what they want. So, you know, back to the Carl Jung, uh, the Carl Jung aspect is that we're applying cultural things to it. In the Victorian times, people saw things in the sky, and what they became was was airships and balloons. And that's because those things were just about to be developed. They were the science fiction of their time. So people saw these sort of flying airships. And if you see the drawings and the descriptions of them, they look like sort of a Victorian version of uh, the later, you know, Zeppelins that came afterwards. And the same thing is happening today with UFOs. Hollywood has fed people with everything from Star Wars to Star Trek to the X-Files. With this, It's almost like predictive programming that, well, it has to be an alien from space. It's some kind of secret. They're not tell, we're not ready to know about it yet. Well, that is ridiculous. That's the idea. We're not ready to know about it yet. And, uh, you know, they're coming in spaceships. And the spaceships look just like the spaceships that exist on Hollywood movies. Or usually the Hollywood, if you look at just every kind of spaceship that's ever been seen in a UFO sighting, it looks like something from Hollywood that ha had a few years before or came up at around that time. And that's why this has been repeated all through history. This is what human beings do. There's a real mystery here and it's something that we shouldn't ridicule. We should actually be looking into the psychological aspects of this. Perhaps even there's a quantum mechanical aspect to it where people are, through their own consciousness are creating these visions for themselves. To me that's far more fantastic and far more interesting than aliens coming in spaceships to you know, do experimentation on us and genetically change us. I, I, I think a lot of that too is, 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 is just, it's almost like, it's almost like it allows people to stop thinking deep, deeper about the subject. It almost draws a wall around the whole concept of what these, this phenomena is. So if you saw a strange light in the sky in, you know, in, in Kerala, in India, in the 1500s, you saw the goddess Kali. If you saw a strange light in the sky in, in Fatima in the early part of the 20th century in Portugal, you saw the Virgin Mary. And if you saw a strange light in the sky at anywhere in the West, practically, but mainly in places like the United States in the 1950s, you saw a flying saucer. And this is not to demean the people who see these things. They may genuinely be truly seeing these things. In fact, I, I kind of believe a lot of them are. And the reason why is, I, you know, when I was younger, uh, the one of the first few times I, I tried LSD, I was with a bunch of people in a room, and uh, I just thought I was just going to trip out and have a bit of fun and stuff like that, and I did. But what happened was we all saw the same vision from different angles. It was a snake going around the floor and it passed through the, the, the chairs we were sitting on. And no matter where myself or my three other friends were sitting in the room, we all saw the same snake, followed the same trajectory across the floor, doing the same things. And that's just astounding when you think about it. That changed my whole, like, notion of reality it made me realize that the actual lsd or magic mushrooms or whatever people take it doesn't create illusions what it does is allow us to see things that are outside our actual vision and that's probably what's happening with the whole ufo phenomena 
And I really wish that that would be studied and looked into more, rather than there's a whole thing going on. Like I stopped watching the UFO videos a few weeks ago because they were starting to get on my nerves, this whole disclosure thing. The, the government are finally going to tell the truth about alien contact. I don't believe the US government or any government has a clue what these things are any more than us. And if they do, they probably come to the same conclusion that Carl Jung came to back in 1947. That it's some kind of vision that's triggered by the human mind and people apply a cultural uh, icon or archetype to this image they see which, become, which encapsulates it and makes it meaningful to them. And to me, that's far more interesting and far more worthy of study and time than looking for aliens who are landing in spaceships.